album cover or something. It should be interesting artwork in itself. Otherwise, just read the ebook. <laughs> Why bother? <laughs> I just had, um, can I touch your shirt? Move Excuse your, me? May I touch your shirt? You can do anything you like, my dear. <laughs> oh, well, you don't, don't want to open that can of worms. <laughs> Just, Wait a minute, maybe I better call my wife first. <laughs> yes, or uh, you definitely don't. She's out cruising the junk shops. We don't have enough junk at home. Oh, neat. Yeah. So um, I would like to ask you, what are you planning to talk about tonight in your talk at NAU? What I'd like to do is entertain everybody and remind them why we love stories. I first heard stories from my mother who taught me how to read I was a squirrely, hyperactive kid, probably had uh, ADD and all the other um, acronyms, but um, they, um, we dealt with it in our family. We just had a back door. That's how we dealt with it. And um, anyway, I, I couldn't sit still in class. My mother told me how to read. And the first stories I ever heard were from her. So I love to go around and remind people in a dark theater why we love stories. I've read... Um several of yours, including San Miguel, which is so different than Tortilla Curtain. Why, um, are, is it just that you enjoy different genres? Is it something that you decide? Well, Teresa, I wouldn't call it a different genre. I'm writing literature, that's what I do. And um, I love to be various and have nobody pin me down as to what's coming next. So I had just written um, When the Killing's Done on the Channel Islands. I live in Santa Barbara, the Channel Islands are out there. I wrote a, a, an environmental book, When the Killing's Done. And while doing the research, I found um, these historical stories about San Miguel, the farthest island out. And I decided to try to write a non-ironic, non-comic, straightforward, realistic novel from the point of view of three women who lived on this island as a kind of challenge. Could I do it? Further, the material just fascinated me. Uh, to make up for it, the novel I just finished this past summer, um, The Harder They Come, is your basic hairy-chested man's novel where people get shot and violence occurs. My husband will like that. I hope so. So um, with Tortilla Curtain, you, and you joked before we started that did you read it for a course? I read it for pleasure. and. I really appreciated how you could bring what is now one of our hot topic, uh, hot button topic mm. items for politically and make it really human. Uh, was that your intention? My intention is to make art and I don't know what it's going to be. Uh, I grew up in New York. I had never been west of the Hudson River till I was 21, uh, 25 actually. I went to the Iowa Writers Workshop. From there I went to LA. Um, and arrived there in the late 70s. And so I'll always be kind of a fish out of water. I don't have the same attitudes exactly as the native Californians. And so um, I wrote the book in 93 when Prop 187 was up uh, on the ballot. And I'm just trying to sort things out. Uh, as it turns out, um, the book does do what you suggest. It has four points of view, a Latino couple, man and female, and the uh, Anglo couple, and um, I think if you, the, be the best I can do is if you know someone intimately of another um, ethnic group or race, then you can't just say they are all this or they are all that, and that's how it turned out. A again, my intention is not political, I'm not trying to persuade people to do one thing or another, I'm just exploring things for my own purposes and to make art, to make a story, uh, that's what gives me pleasure. And others. <laughs> Yeah. So, you're going to be talking to this diverse group tonight, and a lot of them will be 18, some will be 48. Um, what types of, um, if talking to the real young person who's still a college student, what would you like to share with them that a, a morsel that they could take on in their life? Well, as we said earlier, um, I would like them to remember that there is literary art, it's still alive, and it can be as captivating and as much fun as going to a concert or to a play, or, God forbid, playing video games. 
um, which is what the Relive Box is about, by the way. This story that I will give you tonight, uh, it'll be in the New Yorker in the next week or so. Um, it's a kind of meditation on the fact that we are so enclosed now and don't really have much social interaction or contemplative time anymore. I like to turn everything off at a certain point in the day. You know, I'm staring, like everyone else, I'm staring into a screen, working all day, I'm doing email, running my business, etc. cetera. Um, when that's over, maybe let's say two or three in the afternoon, I like to forget about that and um, go out in the woods, uh, take a walk on the beach, uh, go wherever I'm gonna go, bring a book, read a book, uh, whatever it is, um, and just be detached and unplugged for a while. I think it's healthy and productive for everybody so that, um, you know, maybe you miss a message or two, but you can always deal with it tomorrow. So I like to keep that in mind, and I wonder if um, people might be just slightly happier if they were to go out, let's say, to Oak Creek with a book once in a while, you know? Where does it live by? Did you want to ask anything, Eric? That was great. Did you want to add anything? Thank you. You're welcome. My sister's in Santa Barbara. She 